Now, um, you mentioned some of the concerns that you have about the bill. For instance, that it is not uh, very specific and, and it's hard to identify at this point or define what it covers and what it doesn't. W what are other uh, concerns or objections that uh, you and your organizations um, have against it? Well, when it comes down, Katarina, when it comes down to the Animal Rescue League of Iowa, we get a lot of calls. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, we don't have state agents in the, the, the state of Iowa. Uh, we basically count on law enforcement, local law enforcement, uh, to deal with situations or complaints about animal abuse and neglect. And as you can imagine with that uh, system, there is a lot of challenges. Maybe law enforcement in a particular area is not well versed in what constitutes animal neglect or abuse. They may have a lot of questions. They may have a, a real limited resources to actually work with. So the Animal Rescue League has basically uh, been in a role for several years where if somebody calls and says that they've got a concern about a dog or a cat or a horse or pig or cow or whatever, uh, that they'll contact the Animal Rescue League and they'll, they'll basically say, does this constitute animal cruelty? Um, you know, in, in a lot of those cases, uh, before it even goes on into law enforcement, we'll ask the people, you know, because the Animal Rescue League has limited resources as well, we'll ask the individual to take a picture, take a video, and send it over to us. Very often these are people contacting us that are on the property of the concerned place for very legitimate reasons, and uh, they'd like to get kind of a second opinion. So they'll take pictures and send them over to us. And, uh, you know, often there's those, those are situations where there's any question at all, we will recommend they contact their local law enforcement with that information. And we follow up with the law enforcement to see if there's any resources we can offer to help them deal with it. But, you know, according to this situation, <clears throat> uh, what's being proposed here, I am not going to, in all uh, fairness to the individuals being able to that, that contact us, I'm not going to be able to make the recommendation for them to take pictures uh, without sharing with them that if this becomes law, there is a law that says that they may uh, be met with civil and criminal um, charges uh, levied against them for providing that information. So, you know, that's a that's a huge problem and a huge concern that the Animal Rescue League has. What, again, this is a, I'm trying to uh, learn my way through this as I go. I, I thought in my reading of the bill and, and from a very brief conversation, like 30 seconds that I had yesterday with uh, Representative Sweeney, my understanding is that it, it's limited to individuals who seek employment for the purpose of taking under, undercover videos and photographs? I understand that that's her insistence, that that is the only reach that this seems to have. That is not from the people that I talk to, and the way I read it, limited to only those people that enter into a contractual agreement. But if it is, that presents a concern that basically it says that you, to me, that says that you enter into a contractual agreement that if you see a crime being committed, you are not allowed to document it or report it to anyone other than the, than the farmer or commercial dog breeder or whoever you are working for. That's what that says to me, and that's a huge problem as well. Okay, so first of all, you're not convinced that that's, that's all that the bill would encompass. And second, even if that were the case, you're concerned that it would have a, a, a very significant chilling effect on whistleblowers. Absolutely. I think it would throw whistleblowing out the door. I mean, who, who is going to want to get involved in that type of situation? And like I said, the majority of our calls are from people that just, frankly, really don't know, it doesn't feel right to them, but they don't know whether they should be reporting it at all. Uh, uh, if you take that individual and you say, you know, well, this, this, you know, this may be uh, a crime that's going on that you're seeing, but if you do any documents,
documentation or you turn it on, you may be charged with up to a Class C felony. Who's going to possibly be involved with that? What? Somebody, I, I can imagine. What, what is... Okay, what if it's as Representative Sweeney mentioned to me yesterday, and it is for folks specifically seeking employment for the purpose of blowing the whistle on suspected um, animal abuses? Um, do you do you have a problem with that as well? In other words, do you think that it should be legal for folks working for Mercy for Animals or the Humane Society of the United States or other organizations, animal protection organizations? Do you think it should be uh, legal for such folks to apply for a job, be employed, and, and really be there so that they can gather information possibly against that company? You know, if they feel like if they feel like crimes are going unreported, uh, you know, then then I think I I, I do think that that'd be okay. Um, you know, from the standpoint that if they honestly feel that there are crimes that are being unreported, I, I'll give you an example. You know, we had situations where <clears throat> uh, a number of years ago, uh, it was virtually impossible to get into any commercial dog breeding establishment. And, uh, you know, so quite frankly, you know, there was a lot of concern from people about uh, dog breeding establishments and what was going on. There was a lot of information that was coming to animal shelters at the time uh, about activities that were going on. And so quite frankly, the media uh, went undercover and, you know, posed as um, people going to buy puppies uh, with hidden cameras and they uncovered awful things. They uncovered, you know, a dog that had uh, broken its cesarean section, uh, cesarean section uh, sutures, and uh, uh, dirt was getting dropped into the wound, um, you know, and all of those types of things. There was no indication that that dog was going to receive veterinary care. Horrendous situations. 